year in the house of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord is better than a thousand days in Florida. A thousand days in Alaska, which is my place to go. Better than a thousand days in Las Vegas, in Hawaii, Jamaica. One day in the presence of the Lord is better than thousands elsewhere. Amen. Amen. I want to say I'm so appreciative of what the Lord has done and what Lacey has allowed the Lord to do in her life. I appreciate that so much. Appreciate Connie. Well, she's been worshiping like crazy tonight, man. I just, I try not to look at her because she might quit. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's fresh water. Fresh flow. Hallelujah. Sometimes life will still come against you. But you'll never be by yourself again as long as you live. Right. Never be alone the first second. Because Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. Brother McKinney, even to the end of the world. David said, I believe if I take on the wings of the morning and soar into the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, and there you are as well. Nowhere I can go to flee from his presence. Hallelujah. So be strong and of good courage. For the Lord your God is with you. Hallelujah. The scripture says, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them, for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Deuteronomy 20, 3 through 4. Write it down, read it every day, commit it to memory. The Lord is with you. And when he goes to battle for you, it's not to help you put on a good showing. It's for you to win. Hallelujah. It's a little bit after 7. We've had a nice service. Malachi chapter 1. Amen. We're going to baptize Sister Mary in Jesus' name after church, after we get through preaching. Amen. I'm excited about that, aren't you? Amen. Excited. Amen. There's something happens to you when you take on the name of Jesus. Amen. I would encourage you, if you're here and you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, it's not only time, but it's high time we talk about it. Amen. Polly talked to me after church this morning, and she's going to want to get baptized. Amen. We're going to go through teaching her how what she's got to do. You don't just decide, but you repent. You die out to your sins. But then she'll be 80 years old in November. Amen. And uh, I think it's awesome thing, awesome thing that she showed up here for church and the Lord moved on her and she said, I think I want to be baptized. Amen. And I appreciate that. And, and we'll certainly do it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 13 says, you said also, behold, what a weariness is it. And ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts. And you brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus, or in this manner, you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth, 
and sacrifices unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Hallelujah. I want to help you a little bit tonight. Hallelujah. I want to help you a little bit tonight. Amen. How many of you know that it does nobody any benefit to just slide? But we've got to have some correction, some instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's the Bible. Amen. I, I feel led of the Holy Ghost this afternoon and tonight. I, I kind of wrestled with the Lord because I told him pretty, pretty kind of hinted around and said, I don't want to preach this. But uh, it was very plain, very quick that it came to me. And uh, uh, he's the boss. And I answer to him. Amen. So if you'll receive the word of the Lord in the intention, with the intent that it is delivered tonight, which is to help us. I have been around services in the past where we experienced a little surge of revival and then became complacent. And the scripture says, Woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. Undoubtedly it happened to the children of Israel. They said, We have piped unto you and you haven't danced. There is a response that the Lord expects. I said that the Lord expects. Amen. I want to respond how he expects. Let's pray. Lord, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, oh God. Oh God, I'm overwhelmed at your generosity and your grace and your blessings and your presence. Uh, thankful for all the lives that you're changing and that you're in the process of changing and that you've already changed. Help us to go on to perfection. Help us to go on to perfection, pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I thought it was kind of neat before I begin my sermon tonight that we've been praying for William Seals for, for quite a long time. I, I guess it's been, I, I don't know, it's, it's been not long after uh, that Ray and Betty Joe started coming to church that he mentioned to me about praying for William Seals. And so it's been several months, and I had no idea. I saw Brother Zip come in this morning and go shake hands with him and, and come to find out that they ran around together when they were younger and, and that William and his family lived next door to Brother Billy Butler in Sykeston, and they used to go to church at Sykeston. He and David Butler were really good friends. And then come to find out that, uh, that William's wife was raised up in church at Morehouse. She came up under Brother Kerr. So who knows what might happen when you begin to pray for somebody, what kind of connection there is. And I've preached to you that there's going to be backsliders and there's going to be folks that attended service with us in days of old that are going to return to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord that spoke to us tonight confirmed once again that the things that he has impressed us with and the things that he has led us to have come to pass in many cases. Some of the, I, I, I even, not by name, but I spoke the nature of the people to this congregation and they have been to church. Amen. The Lord is directing us and I can assure you Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, I want him to direct me. I, many days when I enter into his gates with thanksgiving and I enter into his courts with praise, uh, one of the things I have to thank him for is for correcting me. I have to thank him for chastising me and for directing me in the right path. And I get joy when I do that because the Bible says he chastens those that he loves. And when I feel the correcting hand of God on my life, Brother Pete, I am reminded that he loves me. He loves me. We have the king on our side. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Master. We have great church. 
I, I, Brother Damesworth told me this week, he and I, he went with me and Brother Flanagan to conference, uh, and he was reminded of the, the very first service that he ever preached here. He told me that my dad gave a message in tongues, and, and he even remembered a, a lot of what went on in the service, uh, but he said he was blown away when he came into this church the first time at the depth of the Spirit uh, and at the depth of the worship uh, and of the anointing that was in this church. Uh, and I concur. I have preached in a number of different churches, uh, but I can tell you that there is an anointing in this church. Uh, there is a power in this church. Uh, there is a heritage in this church uh, that says God wants to do great things. We have a great spirit. We have great anointing. We have a great facility. We have great music and great singing. And we have good preaching. Uh, we have everything we need to have an unbelievable revival, Brother Billy, and to see an unbelievable amount of souls come in. Uh, there is only one thing now. You hear me right now. There is only one thing that can stop us. And that is us giving less than our best. That is us uh, becoming complacent, uh, us becoming at ease in Zion, uh, us saying that we can sit back and rest uh, and fold our arms uh, and patty cake uh, when the new converts begin to worship. Uh, but I come to tell you tonight uh, that we cannot do that. Uh, we cannot sit back and rest. Uh, that Jesus is coming uh, for a bride, for a church, uh, and there's more souls to win. Uh, there's more fruit to bring forth. Uh, there's more miracles to perform. In Acts, oh God, help me. Come on, Holy Ghost, help me. In Acts chapter 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter number 5, the church is in its infant stages. Brother, Brother Pete, they're all still riding the new convert wave. Souls are being saved. Souls are being saved by the thousands. By the thousands, I said. And the morale is high. When they, they are thrown in jail and they are beaten for preaching the gospel, they didn't go get mealy-mouthed and go get down in the dumps and go around looking for somebody to cry or get any tear in their beer, so to speak, but they called a prayer meeting. And the church folks got together and they said, Lord, give us boldness uh, that we may speak the word of God, uh, that we may not listen to those that want to shut us up uh, because we cannot stop. Uh, because once the power of the God has blown into this world, uh, it intends to touch every man, woman, boy, or girl. Even when in prison and persecuted, the church continues to see the powerful hand of God work through them. Can I tell somebody, we're going to face opposition. We're going to face obstacles. Uh, sometimes you're not going to feel good. Sometimes you're not going to be high on life uh, or even feel full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but you got to just keep on uh, because God is still true uh, and God is still good. Uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost will still change a life. There was a man I heard speak once that had seen many miracles happen under his ministry. A lot of healing when he laid on of hands. And he said that he had seen more miracles uh, when he was down in the mully grubs uh, than he, when he was flying high full of the Holy Ghost. So don't just because you may not be feeling uh, that buzz all the time uh, does not mean uh, that the power of God is still not working. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Their possessions, the things that they had were only a means of continuing the growth of the church, of sustaining them between moves of God. With great power, the Bible said, the apostles gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and the great grace that was upon them all. Nobody lacked anything. Everybody had everything they need. We've got to remember that they had come from all over the world to celebrate the Passover, and when the Holy Ghost got on them, they just did not go home. Amen. 
I don't know if you know it or not. I'm going to step down here a little early tonight. I don't know if you realize it or not, but that same thing is happening in our service. Uh, we thought we had everybody gone home today, and I peeked around the corner, and the parking lot's still full of people. You can tell when revival comes uh, that folks continue to want to hang out together, that there's a camaraderie, that there's a good feeling. It's the Spirit of the Lord. And when the Lord starts blessing, you don't want to get away from it. So don't stop. You visit. If I got to go home, I'll slap my key in your hand and you just stay here. It was necessary for them, for all the people that had come from all over the world, it was necessary for them to pool their resources in order to help those who were staying to be part of this outpouring and had not gone home yet. They sold their houses and brought all the money to the apostles and they distributed to every man as he had need. Now I've got to remind you, this was not a commandment of God. This was not to be a pattern for every church to follow. I'm not preaching that we got to start selling everything we have and spreading it out amongst us. In case you get nervous, I'm not preaching that. But for that time it was necessary. They were willing to do whatever was necessary to ensure that the flow of the Spirit of God continued. They were willing to do whatever it took to ensure that people continued to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and people's lives continued to be changed. A man named Joseph, known as Barnabas by the disciples, he had a piece of land and he sold it and brought the money and laid it at the disciples' feet. But then the Bible says a certain man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold a possession. They took the money and gave it to the apostles. However, they kept back part of the money, and but they implied that they gave everything. Immediately, the Lord directed Peter as to what was happening. Peter asked Ananias, Why has Satan filled your hearts to lie to the Holy Ghost? While it remained, it was yours, Brother Billy. Nobody made him sell that property. And when they got the money for it, nobody made them bring any of it to the church. It was yours. It was your liberty to do with it as you will. Why would you conceive this thing in your heart? The reason they did it, Brother Billy, was they had a desire to be a part of what was going on. But they desired to do it uh, according to their own measurement of cost. According to their own measurement of commitment. Uh, they had a desire to be seen and to be a part uh, of those that selflessly gave everything without giving everything. They wanted to hold on to part of what was theirs. Immediately, Ananias was struck down and died. And shortly his wife came in and she told the same lie. And she too was struck down and died. Brother Pete, for years in reading the Bible, I have never fully understood. Other, up until the last couple of years, I've never really understood how a God of mercy and a God of grace and, and a God that was, was so full of goodness and so full of, of wanting to help people would act so drastically and so radically upon these two people. That, that kind of went against the grain of the God that I serve. He's a God that likes to step in and say, well, you've done wrong. Now you need to, to you know, when David David uh, committed adultery. He just he had sent the prophet to tell him what he did wrong, and he was known about it. But yet he didn't kill David. Of course, the baby suffered. But I couldn't figure out why would he strike Ananias and Sapphira dead for lying to the Holy Ghost? Why did he deal so harshly with them? Surely, there were the, the early church was people. They were humans like us. Surely, they weren't the only ones who did something wrong. The gospel needed to be spread to the whole world. It would ride on the back of persecuted saints. Without being sold out, they would have given in and the gospel would have been quenched. The Lord could not allow part-time commitment to reign and to rule in the kingdom of God. He must quench out. He must knock out. He must punch out any kind of seed. Because you notice, Brother McKinney, the Bible said that was a tool of the devil. He was going to try to bring down the early church because in the society that we live, if we think we can accomplish anything on half the effort, we certainly will be quick and easy to do it. Right. 
you may come at the 11th hour. You may hire out for a penny, but Brother Billy, you still must give everything. We cannot try to get by on less than our best. We must sell out completely and enter into a covenant with God in which we agree to give all. The devil can't stop us. Disease can't stop us. They are subject to the power that works in us. Our decision to give everything must be from our heart and not from our lips. The vision we have been given by God is one that God desires to come to pass. Our society has been schooled to believe that we have a right to be a part of whatever we want by just showing up. There is a direct connection be the de- blah, blah, blah. there is a direct connection between the decline of our workforce integrity and the morals the, the morals uh, of our community uh, and the decline of the morals of our country when we adopted the philosophy of everybody gets to play the one who works hard and the one that gives extra time and the one that gives everything and the one that shows up are entitled to the same amount of time and the same amount of of, of exposure. In the world we live in now, everybody gets to play. But I come to tell you in the kingdom of God, there is no award for just showing up. We must purpose in our heart to give our very best. The Lord never asked for a simple offering. He asked for the best of the best. We have been inundated with the curse that mediocrity is a good thing. But the Lord is doing a great thing in our church, a great thing among our people. And we cannot, I cannot as the pastor of this church afford to let the devil have any opening into the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. If he tried it back then, Brother McKinney, he'll try it now. It'll be the devil's business, but i got to head him off at the pass. I've got to tell him you're not welcome in here because this church is going to give their best. We're going to worship with all we got. We're going to praise with everything we got. We're going to give everything we've got. Can I tell you something? Please don't misunderstand me, but you don't have to be anointed to give everything you got. You don't have to be bubbling over with the Holy Ghost to give everything you got. You don't have to be talented to give everything you got. And the way to keep the devil out of your life, the way to keep the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life from ruling in your life is give everything you got to the Lord. Everything you've got to the Lord. In our text, and I'm hurrying to a close. In our text, this is an admonition to the priesthood. They have grown weary. Can I tell you, they have grown weary of giving God the best of everything. Brother Billy, if they had a, if they had a good, uh, I don't know, a, a good herd of, of calves born, Brother Pete, they had... I just stepped over into the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Somebody hear me right now. When they raised up a good herd of new calves, they had to walk among them. And they had to find the fattest, the prettiest, the one with the best coat, the one with the prettiest horns, the one with the best moo. And then take it out and carry it to the house of the Lord. And Brother Pete, they had grown weary in giving God all of it. They had grown weary of giving God the best of everything. They have snorted or sniffed at the commandment of God. And they brought that which was torn and lame and sick. Basically, they gave God the rejects. They gave, Brother McKinney, instead of giving God the best, they gave him what nobody else wanted. And then they expect the Lord to accept it 
as if it were the best. But the Lord said, but cursed be the deceiver. When you have in your flock the best, the elite, the fat, and you promise it, you promise to give the best, but then you deliver the corrupt. You deliver the scraps. You deliver the leftovers. The Lord said, for I am the great king. What they lost sight of, Brother Pete, was where the best came from anyway. They lost sight of where the best, where the beautiful calf or the beautiful lamb came from, of who creates every living thing. And the Lord said, you have deceived me. You've tried to trick me by telling me you were giving me the best and bringing me the scraps. He said, but I am a great king. Can anybody testify in this house that he's a great king? He's just reminding them, Brother Billy, oh, how can you do that to me? I am a great king. I have been a great king to you. I have delivered you. I have healed you. I have blessed you. And then he says, and even the heathens give great respect to my name. Oh, you remember what it was like uh, when the children of Israel stormed into jo- to Jericho. The two spies showed up at the house of Rahab uh, and they, she, she took them in and she watched over them uh, and because she said, we've heard about you people. We've heard how the Lord rolled back the Red Sea uh, and drowned all those Egyptians. They ain't never been to Jericho. Everybody that'd been to Jericho died but Joshua and Caleb. But they heard, they heard, they heard. Even the enemy knows. Thou believest in one God, thou doest well. The devils believe and tremble. The Lord said, I'm a great king. And even my name is respected among the heathen. But my own people are trying to shortchange me by giving me less than their best. What is implied is that through familiarity has come contempt. The heathen trembles at the name of Jesus, yet the one that I gave my life for disrespects me enough to try and give me less than their best. The temptation to give less than our best has overcome the direction of the Lord. We must heed the warning. We can never become complacent or haphazard in our offering of ourselves. He deserves our best, Brother Pete. He deserves our all, Brother Billy. This sheds new light on Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first is not an option, but it's the only way. If he won't be first, he won't be anything. Matthew 25, and I I promise I'm hurrying to a close. I'm ready to get Sister Mary in the water in the name of Jesus. Watch what the power of the Holy Ghost can do in her life and the life of her family. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Everybody say it was his stuff. It was his goods bought and paid for with his money. But he gave it to his servants. And he gave one five talents. Now we've tried to mess that around because we're not familiar with that word like it's some kind of picking a guitar or or playing the spoons or harmonica or piano or whatever. It has nothing to do with talent of being able to do something. Though it is representative of what God has given you. That was his. And he gave one five talents. That's a monetary measurement. And he gave one two talents, Brother McKinney. And he gave one one talent. And the Bible says, can I teach for just a second right here? Can I put it down in grandma low? The Bible says that he gave to every man 
according to his several ability. Can I tell you tonight that God won't ask you to do something that you're not able to do? He has already... He has already put in you what he's going to require of you. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Now what we do is we take the good things God's give us and we give them to the world. But he placed those abilities. He placed those talents. He placed that anointing. He placed that blessing on you for the kingdom of God. And he will not ask of you something that he has not already give you. So the one with five talents made five more. The one with two talents made two more. The one with one talent went and hid it in the dirt. He buried it. When the giver returned to ask for an accounting, he found that the five had been faithful and reproduced five more. The two had been faithful and reproduced two more. And they heard him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Everybody say a few things. I will make you ruler. Let's stand. I'm closing. Because I got to tell you this. The difference between you living a life of dominion and authority and you living a life of being beat down and being a loser is all based upon how much of you you gave the Lord first. I challenge you to put him to the test. He come to the one that had one talent, brother. And he said, before he could even say anything, before he could even ask him anything, he said, well, I knew you were one bad dude. I knew that you did, you did whatever you wanted. You had a lot of stuff, and this all belonged to you, and I was scared. So in case something happened to this one little thing, I went and buried it. It's, it's still there. He told him it's still in a hole in the ground. It's still there. So what was he operating on? He was operating on less than what he had been given. He was living beneath his privilege. He was the one missing out. <laughs> and then the Lord said, take that one and give it to the one that already had ten. And cast this unprofitable servant into outer darkness. The Lord cannot tolerate. He cannot tolerate anything less than our best. I got some more hopping and popping sermons lined up. Just don't worry. But I can't keep preaching hopping and popping without giving you some truth. You can't come to church and feel like because you showed up, you deserve something. I would submit to you that's the very least we can do. All day long. And I, I, if this, there's never been a lady in the world toot her horn less than Sister Barker. But all day long, Sister Barker, I've been thanking the Lord for having you in our church. All day long, Sister Pam, I've been thanking the Lord for having a lady like that in our church. Got a big old sore on her foot, got arthritis all in her body. 
but yet she shows up here every time the doors open. She missed one night. I've been thinking. You say, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all. That's giving God your best. That's giving God your best. And if you stay, if you stay home, Sister Barker, you don't feel any pressure to keep. If you don't feel good, you stay home and rest. But I want to thank you because you didn't. Because when I'm tempted, I'm going to think about you. And I'm going to roll out of bed and put my stuff on. Because I came up on the backs, upon the shoulders of men and women that gave their best. Now, some of you, some of you are wondering what in the world I'm doing preaching this. Boy, it feels good and it feels great and the Holy Ghost is moving. Can I tell you, it didn't come easy. You did not hear what I just said. The blessings of the Lord haven't come without some blood, sweat, and tears. They haven't come without some people giving up of quality time to come seek the face of God. People backing away from meals in order to get the flesh under subjection. People going against their natural fear to do the work of the Lord. And can I also tell you that it will not stay easy. The more that we have from God, the more the devil's going to try to steal. But there's got to be something down inside of you that's bigger than your problems, that's bigger than your fears, that's bigger than your feeling of inadequacy, that's bigger than your frustration with your kids, that's bigger than your frustration with your family. There's got to be something down inside of you that he gets first. feel like the world's biggest killjoy. But I told you I answer to a higher calling. And the Lord wouldn't tell me to preach it, Brother Rice, unless there was danger of it. Unless we need to be reminded. Brother Billy, I've got to give him everything. I've got to worship him. I've got a worship. Let me tell you one story real quickly. Brother Foster told us this as well. He said he comes in sometimes, be bopping. Hey, how y'all doing? Praise the Lord, brother. So good to see you. God bless you. So good to see you. He said he would come in some nights with his Marshall Dillon hat on, with his six shooter strapped on his side couple days growth of whiskers on his face all beady eyed as that's the term he used looking for devils to kill or looking for people to straighten out or till somebody come up to him after church and said brother we can always tell what kind of service we're going to have he said How, is that right he said yep yeah, by the look on your face They just run about 800, 900 people in church. So he said, every time we come into church, we got to have our face saying, he's going to get my best. I may have had a problem or two or 10 or 100. I may be stepping a little bit high because there ain't nothing in my billfold holding me down. But I got to give him my best. I got to give him my best worship. I got to give him my best praise. My job does not deserve my best. My Lord does. Brother McKinney, he said, if I tell you to tell them, and you don't tell them, when they become complacent, their blood will be on your hands.
you might forget what night you danced or what night you shouted, but you will not forget the night Brother GL preached to you that you got to give him your best. I hope that every time that we think about giving him a little bit less, every time, oh, come on. Come on, we cannot, we cannot fall prey to him. I'm just going to cash it in tonight. We've all done it at our jobs before. We all have. Everybody has. Not feel good, maybe a little bit of a belly ache, or maybe didn't sleep good. Kind of just coasted through. We can't do that in the kingdom of God. These altars are open. I would encourage every man, woman, boy, girl, every saint of God, our new people and all, to come to the altar. And if nothing else, ask the Lord, God, remind me. Keep me reminded that I've got to give you my best. I've got to make up my mind when I walk in those doors uh, that you get nothing but my best. Whether it's if I'm a praise singer, I'm going to pray you with all, uh, sing with all I've got. If I'm a musician, I'm going to play with all I've got. Uh, if I'm a worshiper, I'm going to worship with all I've got. You deserve my best. You deserve my best. You deserve my best. Because cursed be the deceiver. Cursed be the deceiver. Thank you.